Welcome back. Now, do you have a special photograph you'd like to share with us? Send it now and we'll call you and you can explain the moment to our viewers. Now, we were talking to Sabrina a little earlier. Kirk, what, was you, what were you thinking when she was explaining what she was, how she started? Um, I was absolutely blown away. It's very interesting that so many of us get this fire from a very early age. We know that there's something calling to us. That was very evident in what Sabrina spoke about. It was also very touching to hear the stories, the interaction with guests down on the beach. Um, and I was just thinking to myself, God, so similar an experience that I tend to have as well with my interaction with guests. Tell us a bit more about you. Oh gosh, where do I start? <laughs> <laughs> um, born in St. Lucia, I, I really think of myself as a truly Caribbean person. I was born in St. Lucia to a Barbadian father, an Antiguan mother. Um, I've studied in Jamaica. My wife is Trinidadian. So I'm very True Caribbean. Right. I'm very, <laughs> the Caribbean is home for me. Uh, in terms of photography, I actually started out, uh, must have been about 11 or 12 when an uncle gave me a camera. And I, it was an instant camera and I was all excited, shooting all these pictures, looking at the pictures developing. And um, I think always being entrepreneurial, I went off to school and I would take pictures for my friends, especially at sports day, but they'd have to pay for the pictures. Five bucks a pop. Yes. Good for you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that love for photography continued. I actually studied in Jamaica. Most people may not know. I've got a degree in geology and chemistry because I studied for the geothermal project and that's a whole nother story which we'll get into sometime. Oh, wow. um, but the interesting thing is is when I studied in Jamaica I also took photography as an extracurricular activity and I remember one day some girl wanted a picture she couldn't get out to go shoot it you know somewhere down in Kingston and so I got out and I shot the pictures for her and when she saw the picture she went wow I hate my pictures, but this looks so good. And um, that has always stuck with me because I don't like having my pictures taken. And as a consequence, I identify with people not liking their pictures. And I work with my subjects to bring out the essence of that person. And I find that something that people gravitate towards. Um, so fast forward, come back to St. Lucia and found myself shooting weddings, doing the scene at the hotel, um, got a call from Sandals, went in, did some work there for a couple of years. And that was really great. That actually introduced me to a lot of the business of photography. Um, today, I'm part of an association, St. Lucia Association of Professional Photographers. Uh, and we have been working to, to get a bigger piece of the pie. Because today there are lots of challenges in the photography industry with hotels that won't allow us to come in and shoot you, pictures. You know, I get really upset when I hear this, and you know that. Yeah. Tell us why. Why wouldn't they want you to come in? It's all about money. Um, for quite some time, I mean, a couple of photographers had contracts with hotels, and I think it really started out with sandals that cancelled the contracts of photographers. And not, not only were those contracts cancelled, but then following up on that, Sandals would not allow photographers to come onto their property to shoot, even though a guest had contracted those services. There are some other hotels that would charge uh, what we would consider to be excessive fees. I mean, 500 US to come on to shoot a wedding. And we would have brides say, sorry, I can't afford to pay that on top of what I'm going to pay you. We've had photographers who have been flying asking brides to to have their weddings in another island and fly them over because sometimes it's cheaper to go that way what does that do for us as, uh, you know for our photographers um it 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 really tears us down tears us apart robs us of revenue challenges us economically um and and i i'm very happy for this opportunity to share this knowledge with the public out there at large because in lots of instances the public have not been aware of this in in recent times we we have raised the issue with the government and we have been told that um steps will be taken to correct it however we are very concerned that 
while the grass is growing, the horses are starving. It is really a big concern. And I think that it's even more important today because um, with tourism being the, the mainstay of St. Lucia's economy, um, if the hotels control all of the business, all of the economic gains, then we, you will get to the point where there will be civil unrest. Um, we can think to the unfortunate incident that happened in Viewfort some time ago with that British guest. And, and I remember getting a call from a British newspaper asking me to go down and shoot some pictures related to that. And I met with a British reporter who was writing the story. And we were having a discussion on it. And he said to me, you know what's sad? It's obvious that these guys did not go there with the intention to have what happened happen, for a death to have resulted. He said that he was aware of the fact that they were not armed. But he said, you know what? I, I sympathize with them. Because if I too didn't have a job and saw people who I felt had more, would it not compel me to go try to get something for myself? And, and when I think of what's happening with the hotels, in this instance, blocking photographers, I think that it is a myopic view because um, you will make some money today, but there's going to come a point when people are going to rebel. They're going to rebel out of necessity. I think it's Bob who said, a hungry man is an angry man. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so these, these are some issues related to photography. These are some of the challenges that we as photographers face. Um, that's on the dark side of it. I want to come to the bright side because there is a bright side. Um, sometime last year, the St. Lucia Tourist Board had its first, and they have said that it's going to be annual, wedding symposium. I absolutely salute the Tourist Board for what they did. What I would like to see happen is for greater opportunity to be created for locals, for locals to benefit from this tourism product. And when I think specifically of photography, um, I would love to see it come about where St. Lucian photographers are promoted because when brides are out there looking, and I see it all the time on TripAdvisor, they are looking for the photographer who is passionate about the work that they deliver. Here, here is an opportunity now for St. Lucia, which is known as the wedding and honeymoon capital of the world, to develop a cadre of photographers who can deliver work that's comparable to, if not better than, the work that's being produced by photographers that brides are today flying into St. Lucia to do the work. That was one of the questions I wanted to ask, and we did say we were going to show some pictures, and I actually do want to, to show them, I think, after this break, because I want to, I if she, she send the picture now there. Okay, um, I, I want to just show this picture, and then I want to show the other pictures after the break. This old house, St. Lucia, yeah. where is it, and this is down it, it, in, does, it doesn't look like a picture. That looks like a painting. <laughs> yeah. You painted that. <laughs> this is down in, in Labry. And wow. one of the things that, that people very often don't understand, sometimes it can take me six or eight months to get the right picture. I've got to get the right light. There mustn't be dust in the air, what's not. I will drive past. I will see a scene and I will come back to it. Fortunately, on that day, it was a beautiful day out. I put everything down, grabbed my camera, beautiful. went out because I knew I wanted that house. That is, that is just, and I now mean, that, that house, that, that house is on the way going out of library, heading towards Viewfort. Since Thomas, that house has been destroyed. Oh, wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah. It, it just looks so, yeah. so gorgeous. One of my it's, favorite pictures. Oh, it's just gorgeous. But I want to, as I said, I want to latch on because I have, we're going into the break. But yeah. the question I wanted to ask is, you speak very highly of our photographers. We haven't got into detail, but... Is some of this happening, i.e. the photographers being flown in because our photographers aren't good enough? It's because or it's there's an assumption that perhaps our photographers aren't good enough? There's, there's an assumption and, and part of it as well is that we as photographers have not showcased our capabilities. And this is why I'm so excited about the tourist board having created this wedding symposium. 
I would love to see a cadre of photographers go out to a bridal show in the U.S. and showcase the amazing work that we can produce. Because right now there are photographers in St. Lucia who are producing bridal work to the tune of 10,000 U.S. and beyond. Oh, wow. But you know the wedding symposium, and, and you know everyone knows I love St. Lucia and I support everything wholeheartedly that the St. Lucia Tourist Board uh, do for the country. But how um, these things are normally expensive, can our local photographers afford to take part in such a thing? Because a lot of the times when we have all these big events, especially when they're held at, at, at Pigeon Point, Pigeon Island, it's organizations who pay. But the photographer, normally, they are independent. They're not big photography yeah. houses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How are they going to pay for that? We're going to go to a break. And when we come back, I'd like Kirk to answer that question and for us to see more of his pictures. So make sure you, re you remain here at DBS and Delore Factor Live. See you soon.